During this video, we're going to explore some basics of scene design in Clara.io. I hope you enjoy it. So we're going to start this project by clicking New Scene or Create New Scene. Create Empty Scene. Go ahead and give it a name. Click Gallery and Create. Now to set up this simple scene, we're going to go up to the creation panel and we're going to go ahead and grab one of these primitives. In this case, I'll just go ahead and grab a box. And this box is going to serve as my focal point that I'm going to work with. And we're going to attach um, some material to it. So once you drop your box or your shape down into your viewport, with it highlighted over here in the Explorer panel, all we have to do to add material to it is click one of these nodes up here. There's Create Physical, Create Standard, so on and so forth. So I'm just going to go ahead and click Create Physical. And when I do, notice that there was a physical um, material node that just showed up in the material library. That automatically got assigned to the box since it was highlighted, but we can make some adjustments to it. So I'm going to go ahead and click on it and then double click on it. And I'm going to rename this Box Material. That way, when I start building up materials and different assets underneath this library, uh, I can kind of tell what's what. So with the box material selected, I can make some adjustments to that material directly, and that will affect how this box or this focal point will look. One of the adjustments that I do want to make is underneath material, go ahead and drop material down in the properties panel, and we're going to just change the color. So where it says color underneath uh, the base, go ahead and double click that. And you can use this little picker to click around and change the color. In this case, I'm just going to go ahead and pick a purple. And I'll lighten it just a, a touch so we can see it a little bit better. And leave it uh, like that. Now let's go ahead and make some adjustments to the focal point itself. And we'll talk about modeling um, in other tutorials, but just so that you're aware and so that we can add some interest uh, to our shape, to our box, go ahead and click on box to select it. Go up to the model tab, and here are all the model tools listed over here in this, uh, this Explorer panel now. Just by clicking that tab, all of these different adjustments uh, came up to our availability. So you can cut it, slice it, taper it, bend it. In this case, I'm just going to go ahead and uh, click twist. And notice when I did that, it applied a twist directly to the object that I had selected. And then over in the properties panel, you can go ahead and make adjustments to that twist if you want. If you want to bump the angle up or down, you can do that over here. And I'll just leave it at, at 180, just as an example. And let's go back and uh, keep building our scene. So we'll click the general tab and go back and continue to, to add assets to this. So the next thing that I want to add is some lighting. And if you hover over top of the lights up here in the creation panel, you can see there's an area light, directional light, and you can use more than one in your scene if you want to um, maybe start with the area light, click it, move it to where it needs to be in space so that it illuminates your object. We can rotate it and navigate that way. I mean, rotate on this axis. Notice with this area light, there's an arrow that is basically pointing at um, the direction that it's gonna it's gonna show. So let me uh, let me hover over this just a little bit, and then we can go in and add other lights as well um, to to light up. Say uh, I can take a spotlight maybe. I'm gonna move it back just a touch, and move it up just to add a little bit more more interest to the uh, the scene. Maybe take care of some of these shadows. I'll go ahead and rotate it, but play around with the lighting. Uh, once you have things uh, illuminated to your liking or um, you think you have them illuminated, we can go ahead and check the lighting. And this is a, a nice little hack for Clara. We can check to see what this would look like um, as a rendered scene. I can go ahead and click on Clara up here and go back to my home page. Click this little tab in the upper left-hand corner of this file. And then I can go into View. When I go into View... I'll uh, get to see basically a, what a rendered version of this would look like. So I can use this little orbit tool to, to move my shape around. I can move left and right in the scene, and I can navigate it uh, just to see how things are looking. I can go back to home, and that's going to take me back to uh, what, what the scene looks like 
um, as I'm working on it. So let me go ahead and click the project again, go back to it and load it. And let's continue to build our scene and this lighting isn't great, but again, this is just an example. And um, again, I encourage you to, uh, to play around with all of these different assets and, and get to, to figure out how they work um, just by doing. Uh, the, the best way to learn is to just jump right in and um, start, start working with different, different objects and assets. Okay, so underneath our objects, we have that focal point, that box, a couple of lights, and we have some material down here in the material library. We're just gonna go ahead and continue to add to the scene. I'm gonna go up here to the creation panel and I'm gonna click plane. And let's go ahead and rather than adding material to the plane, um, let's go ahead and add a, a picture to it. So with UV mapping or projecting, um, I should be able to get an image and drop it onto that plane and use that as a, a background. So to do that, I would jump up and create a new tab um, or jump into a, a website and, or a browser and type in a royalty-free picture. Do a quick image search. And you can find some photos that you can use as a, a backdrop this way. Or if you have your own photographs, obviously you could you could use those. Uh, if you're on a PC or a Mac, you can just drag the image to your desktop and load it that way. Or you can just uh, right click it and download it into downloads uh, if you're on a, a Chromebook. So we'll go back to our scene and let's go ahead and load this, uh, this into Clara. So I, I grabbed uh, this image here and I can just drag it over top of my viewport to upload the file. Or I can go up here to File and go down to Import Files. And when you do that, you can either drag it into this little area here or you can click Choose File and then navigate to it if it's in your, your downloads on a Chromebook um, or some type of a library on your computer, you can do it that way. So I'm just actually gonna grab um, a picture of one of my watercolor paintings and I'll use that as a, a, a backdrop instead of that photograph. Click Open and notice down here in the lower left-hand corner, um, you can see that there's a, a progress bar and it's, it's importing. Sometimes these can take a while, but just be a, aware of that. You'll be able to tell when it's imported. Notice that it's now imported and it's in my material library. So rather than just dragging this onto the plane, um, I'm going to go ahead and right click it and go down to create material from image. And when I do that, you can see that a, a material node showed up here. And now I can go ahead and I can apply that to any of the objects that I have in my, um, my explore panel. In this case, I'm going to go ahead and click plane. And I'm going to, underneath properties, add that material or that image to this plane. So I can go down to material and I can select that watercolor background material. And when I do, you can see that it showed up directly on that plane. Let me go ahead and uh, rotate it. So I can use this now as a, a backdrop um, or if I want to make it look like uh, it's the ground or something like that. I can bring in a, a photograph of, um, let's say I want it to look like bricks or something like that. But just rotating that, that plane up in space and then navigating it to a, to a point where it's behind my objects. Um, perhaps we can, we can build some little uh, light studio here for this, this project. Um, but that works works pretty well and you can make adjustments to the material from there on uh, just by clicking the material and give it a different look but I'm just gonna keep it like this for uh, again for, for our purposes so the next thing that I want to do so now I've got a kind of a, a back wall or a backdrop and I've got a focal point here I'm gonna go ahead and click on the box and I'm gonna move it up a little bit and start to build uh, a bit of a scene and then we'll put an animation to this uh, this object to, to finish things out. So the next thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and grab another plane and I'm gonna use that as perhaps a floor. So I'll drop another plane in. Go ahead and move it back in space just a touch and navigate to a, a more interesting focal point. 
So while you're navigating, uh, a couple of shortcuts. If you hold Command on your keyboard and just kind of drag around in the viewport, you can uh, you can pan around to get a little bit better view. If you want to center things up, there are shortcuts for that too. But what I like to do is just basically click on my assets, click on the top one, hold Shift, click on the bottom one, and then you can use your Move tool to move things around uh, together rather than trying to to group them in some type of a hierarchy. Another thing that I like to do is um, if, if you're trying to figure out what's what, aside from just renaming, we can turn these eyeballs on and off here. So I know that this is uh, my bottom plane, or I'll just go ahead and double click that, type in floor so I don't get confused with it. And I can go in and assign it um, a material uh, color. So I'm just going to go ahead and grab another material up here. And I'll go ahead and leave that gray, but again, you can adjust the color or you could select um, one of the images and you could apply that to, uh, to the floor itself as well. So the next thing that I want to do is adjust the, uh, the area light just a, a touch. Um, and then we're going to go in and start to add some, uh, some animation to this. So I just took the, uh, the spotlight. I'm trying to to illuminate the scene a little bit better. I'm using that area light just as a fill light to fill in some of those shadows. I'm going to leave that shadow on that back wall though. I kind of like how that looks. Okay. Um, at this point, if you want to do a quick check to see how it looks, you can go back and uh, jump into to your view um, and see what it looks like rendered. But in this case, I'm just going to go ahead and highlight this box and let's start talking about animation. Uh, let's add a little bit of movement to this. So I'm going to select this box or this focal point and I'm going to go ahead and move it in space a little bit. I'm going to make it rotate. So down here um, at, the, at the bottom of your viewport is your timeline. There's a scrubber here, this little, uh, little red um, dash. There's a play button here and a, a back and a forward button so you can check your animation as you, you work with it. So with box selected, I'm going to go up here to transform. I'll drop that down. And here are your transformations or adjustments for you to move this thing in space. So you can move it along the X, Y, and Z axis here. You can rotate it through the, the rotation or you can scale it up or down, or you can add an adjustment to it called shear, which will basically uh, kind of kind of bend it in space as well. So for for this animation, let's keep it simple and let's let's add a rotation to this. So we'll have this thing rotating in space in front of our backdrop uh, with it lit. So I'm going to go ahead and drop a, a keyframe to get started. So with the rotation right here as as zero, I guess I can go ahead and click this rotation. And I just dropped a, a yellow keyframe down here. And I can move that keyframe anywhere along the timeline that I want so that I can have whatever action that I just clicked in um, perform. I'll go ahead and grab my scrubber and move ahead a little bit. And let's go ahead and uh, rotate this thing a little bit. And click rotation. And again, when I click that uh, rotation, um, transformation. Notice it, it dropped a, another keyframe. And then I can go through this and I can scrub to see what that, that motion is going to look like um, and rotate it along the timeline all I want. So you start with um, clicking rotation or the adjustment that you want to make. Move your timeline to where you want that action to actually happen and then click it again. And I'm just going to go ahead and uh, rotate this quite a bit. I can actually highlight this and I'll type in 720, hit enter, and wherever your red scrubber is along that timeline, um, once you click translation, that will hold. So I click 720, click rotation, and you can see that from this um, space here, from this little uh, keyframe that I, I dropped in frame zero, it's going to rotate 720 degrees to this space. And I'll just go ahead and drag that 720 all the way to the end. And I'll slow things down and it'll give me 720 degrees of rotation over those 200 frames. I would uh, encourage you to, uh, to make some uh, adjustments um, just to see how the animation is affected 
So I'll uh, I'll bu bump the scale up a little bit and drop a keyframe. Let me go ahead and move that here, and I'll move the the scrubber a little bit and make an adjustment to the the scale again and hit scale and see how that's going to look by moving the scrubber. And then I can add a shear perhaps, drop a keyframe by clicking shear. And then I'll move it, move the scrubber a little bit more, click shear again with an adjustment. And again, just experiment. And as I mentioned, you can, uh, you can make as, as many adjustments as you want, drop as many keyframes as you want. And you can move those around the timeline. And those adjustments that you made with those keys will show up at those different um, points along the timeline, depending on which uh, frame you're on top of with the, the um, keyframe. Um, hopefully that wasn't too confusing, but literally just go in and start uh, playing around with, uh, especially translation, um, getting this thing to either rotate or, or move around in space and dropping some keyframes in, and it's pretty easy to, to get the hang of it. Now the last thing I want to do is just bump up the intensity of the, the light sources, so I'll go ahead and click on Spotlight and go over here and just bump up the intensity um, under the, the top drop down for light. I can bump that up a bit and I'll do the exact same thing for the uh, the area light. So again, intensity, I'm going to bump that up a bit and go back to uh, my home screen and take one last look in uh, the view. And at this point, uh, we can go ahead and download this. Let me go ahead and hit uh, play to animate it. Uh, we could do a screen capture of the animation if we wanted to in the, the rendered view. Um, or we can go ahead and share it. So hopefully that gave you a nice overview of how to use some of the tools in Clara and get an animation going and a, a quick uh, scene design.